and join in God's mission for the land of the world. Yep. And uh, sponsors, who are you presenting today? Galen, and do you present anyone else today? Okay, welcome, Kaylee and Cheyenne. Cheyenne, I need you to do me a favor. Can you hold on to this picture of water for me? And then will you bell the fort and hear when I tell you to? Think you can do that for me? Sweet. Okay. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your children baptized into Christ? Please respond. As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. Hey, Cheyenne, can you hold on to that for me? Oh, thanks. To live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that your children may learn to trust God. Proclaim Christ the word and deed, care for others and the world of God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and love? Sponsors. <clears throat> Henry Dodaro is also a sponsor and could not be here with us today. And so can I have some proxy sponsors? <coughs> Grandmothers? Yeah, some mothers. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture these little people in the Christian faith that you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live the covenant of baptism and communion with the church. People of God, do you promise to support Haley and Cheyenne and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? Please respond with, I renounce them. I renounce them. And I'll say the Apostles' Creed together. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Okay, Cheyenne, this is where I need your help now. Okay? I'm going to read some words. And you're going to pour into this bowl. Are you called out to see it there? Can you see what you got for it? Yep. Yep, right in there. Are you ready? Let's go. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit would go to waters. By your word, oh, keep going, that for the whole thing. You created the world, calling forth life, which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Perfect. Pour out your Holy Spirit. 
the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
good works and glorify the Father in heaven. And now we plant the candles. Let's see, okay, Dad. Yeah. Let that candle. Okay. And you can put the puppet down, Kaylee. Join the congregation in singing two verses of this little light of mine.
A reading today from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 2 Corinthians. And I should have started after we sang Jesus loves me, so let us just back up real quick and do the Trinitarian greeting I should have started with. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Now you know that how we open the worship service comes here from the Second Corinthians text. Psalm 8. O Lord, how sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You, you have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O Lord, how sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our gospel today is from John chapter 16, the Holy Gospel according to John. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Amen. Well, what a fun Sunday we had last week with confirmation. That was, that was fun. It was a blast. And as you recall, for those of you who are here, we had um, all the confirmands lined up. All six confirmands. Plus, they all publicly affirmed their faith. Their parents had brought them to baptism. And they now spoke of affirming that decision. They said yes to God, even as God had already said yes to them. And seated next to the confirmants was the little robot, our little silver robot puppet. And none of the confirmants asked me why. And maybe because um, in their sixth grade year, we spent until pandemic shut us down, we talked about why we do what we did in worship service and we used puppets to use these skits. And this was a, a popular puppet. But the reason I set the puppet up there with them was a couple of reasons last Sunday. I wanted them to feel comfortable for me, it was a sign of hospitality to have that puppet that they had used all through their sixth grade year here. I imagine it must be pretty intimidating to be in eighth grade and having to sit up in front of everybody. But at least I didn't do this to them. To this day, Joyce Peterson remembers after confirmation, remember way back in the day, your pastor would ask you questions in front of the congregation. Yeah, talk about being nervous and scared. And, and Joyce distinctly remembers that when it came her turn and uh, that good Swedish pastor asked her the question, her mind went completely blank. And to this day, she remembers that. She could not 
remember what she was supposed to say. So I wanted them to fill that hospitality. And most importantly, from last Sunday, I wanted Kaylee and Cheyenne to see a puppet up here. That things are like our old cave, and we have puppets and, and uh, maybe even T-Rexes with butterflies in its mouth, because all are welcome here. And then the reason I said, though, at the end of the confirmation service why the puppet was up here is that I wanted Kaylee and Cheyenne to know that that little puppet's keeping their seat warm for when they come back for confirmation, and that they're going to be so most welcome here. And yesterday I sent a text to Amy Gustafson, and she's got a little uh, baby Quinn we baptized on um, Transfiguration Sunday this February, and a little older girl, Abby. And they wanted to be here today to, uh, to see the baptism, but they just got back late last night from Texas, or um, Amy would have been here. So Kaylee and Cheyenne baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We've been waiting a while to do this baptism, but Trinity Sunday is a perfect Sunday to have a baptism. That is who we are baptized into is that relationship. Now we all know about relationships. And, yeah, you know, being in a relationship, you know, sounds kind of humdrum. We all know about relationships. What's the big deal? But this is... <laughs> God is in relationship in a way that we are not in relationship. Or better stated, God is in relationship within the Trinity of the way we were all meant and intended to be in relationship. Think about this. Think about the original triangulation. Adam, Eve, and the serpent. Eve blamed the serpent. Adam blamed Eve. Natural triangulation. But you never see any triangulation within the Trinity. God is in relationship in the way we were always intended to be in relationship. Now, I want you to take a moment and think of someone in your life. Someone in your life who cared about you, and maybe you're being uh, not so nice, you are at your worst, but in spite of it all, that someone would not let you go. They would not let you go, even though you didn't deserve it. I'll tell you, Hopefully, a really quick short story. That person happened for me when I was at West Point, and it was my plea year. And you were allowed to go on one spiritual retreat. And because you got to leave the academy, of course, that was popular. Many cadets would go on your one spiritual retreat. Now, it started on a Friday. Because you had classes till Saturday noon, and your rooms were for open inspection on Saturday mornings. So a weekend didn't normally even start till Saturday noon. Not that you got to leave the academy, but that's when your weekend started. But if you went on a spiritual retreat, it started on Friday night. So, I mean, I was involved with the Lutheran Church there, but I went on that retreat. And the first thing we did when we arrived at that retreat on that Friday was they took away our watches. Now, it was a spring retreat. For eight months, I had lived by my watch. There were seven times a day, morning, noon, dinner, each class. Um, after dinner, you had to mark where you were in your room and then tax at 10. You had to be in those places. Seven times a day at noon through Saturday noon. <coughs> You lived and died by your watch. Because if you weren't on time, even by seconds, you had demerits and you never wanted to end up walking there. So when I came in on that Friday night retreat and they took away my watch, I was a little perturbed. 
that didn't exactly set me up for hospitality and welcome into this retreat. And then, after they collected up your watches, they explained there would be a bell. And they would ring a bell, and that's called you and summoned you. Well, it was starting to feel for me a little authoritarian. I had come expecting a weekend away, and here it was another time where you were summoned, you had to be at this place. And then we were in groups, and you had to do group projects, and you had to present. Well, if you've never been a plea about the math boards in front of your classmates and tried to explain a calculus problem in front of your classmates, <laughs> you get tired of at that point of getting up and explaining things to your peers. But that's another thing that I wanted on this weekend. So I was not in the best of moods. But there was this lady in her 50s, and I guess she was at my table. She was one of, I guess, our mentors at our table. And I mean, I wasn't mean or anything, and just my heart wasn't in that retreat. I had a huge English paper due back first thing Monday morning. I would rather have been back writing that paper than going through some of the events. But she showed kindness to me. She never, she just kind of let me be and sulk on my own way. But as the weekend wore on, and uh, I guess the Holy Spirit was, was doing um, her work and, and started working in me, by Sunday, I was like a completely broke person. When I finally felt her grace on me, and she came up to me as we were winding down in the last lunch, and, and she just said, Donna, she said, Jesus loves you, and I love you too. And she gave me this big hug, and I just broke down and wept. I don't cry hardly. I just broke down and wept. Because it was such an overwhelming statement of grace. I'd been pretty poopy the whole way. It was grace. Now what she did for me set me up, I believe, for the next four years as I went through West Point of having a spiritual foundation of how impacted my life was from her and that grace I felt. And that was the love of another human. And that is only a tiny hint of how much God loves us. But that may be the only types of hints we're going to get and we get to fill them as God working through other people. But as the Father loves the Son and the Son loves the Father and the Holy Spirit's love is outpouring through them is how much the Father and God loves you. Now in our baptism, today, at some point, you get a candle, and um, we sing this little light of mine, and what I have finally been reunited with and found was my baptismal candle. When my mom passed in January 2015, I found it in her stuff. She had kept it for me all of those years. And then, um, we know, we got lots of stuff from her and went into the Parsonage basement and it got lost. And I had spent several hours throughout these years in the basement trying to find my candle. And I finally found it. Now, what's really interesting, and what you should know, if I was to walk around, it's got numbers 1 through 13 on it. 1 through 13, and it says Sunday school, 1 through 13. What should have happened, and we should be doing, is that on your baptisms, on that anniversary date of your baptism, you light the candle, and you burn it down, so that by the time you reach 13, for confirmation age, it's burned down. And now you then are ready to affirm your faith. So that's why I'm now like really grateful when we have 
baptisms on Trinity Sunday because Kaylee and Cheyenne will always know now. It was Trinity Sunday. It's a festival church day in you know the church life. They're going to remember. Teach them. Trinity Sunday. And for Quinn, she was baptized on Transfiguration. <laughs> Me? I got baptized on Labor Day weekend. <laughs> Uh, later in the weekend. But at least I have a holiday that I can tie it to now. And uh, yeah, I'll start lighting my candle on Sunday of Labor Day weekend. And I'm going to keep this candle now. That will be the candle that will light all the other kids' candles. Baptized into the Trinity. I also was gifted my bulletin from my baptism. It's pretty funny. Um, the worship theme that day was this. Sins safely hidden. I don't know. <laughs> that was the preaching topic that day in my Missouri Synod Church uh, based on the letter of James. And I kind of laughed at this. Sponsors in this sacred act are Carol and Diane Peterson. My two sisters were there. I also had Mr. and Mrs. Orlin Boysom. They were my mother's sister, but they're out in California. They could not come, so I had proxies. And I also had Mr. and Mrs. Helen Fetcher. This older couple never had children next door neighbors, so I had six sponsors for one little me at seven weeks of age. And I will tell you that Mr. and Mrs. Helen Fetcher um, took care of me. Even when I was in my 30s, they sent me cards on my, on my birthday to remember me, and they left me in their will. Beautiful, beautiful people. Again, how I learned about the love of God through those acts of grace and kindness. So thank you, Cheyenne and Kaylee, for allowing us to remember that on this day, how God draws us into this Trinitarian embrace of our baptisms until the day comes when you guys get to stand up here and affirm your baptisms. And I bet you, I bet you that moment of hope is still going to be here. Amen. Our hymn today is 448. This is the Spirit's entry now. And I don't think this congregation has sung this in the past very much. But it's an uh, easy enough tune. But mainly, uh, I think the words are beautiful. So we will sing. This is the Spirit's entry now, 448. And then we will transition into the prayers of the people. And for our online community joining us in prayers today, when it comes down to the prayers, I will say your baptismal spirit, and I invite you to respond with renewing spirit. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit. <laughs>
united in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit. This is the Spirit's entry now, the water and the word, the cross of Jesus marked on Keely and Cheyenne's, marked as children of God forever. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit, creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit, living redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom. Further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit, abiding comforter, you call out to all who live. Restore seven relationships and protect children who lack trusty, worthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief, those we now name silently in our hearts. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit. Holy Three, you are community and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital relationships in our congregation and beyond. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, filled with your Holy Spirit, we trust these spoken prayers of those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Your baptismal spirit, renewing spirit, renewing spirit, hear our praise and prayers this day. Amen. At this time, I invite you to share the sign of love and peace of Christ. Be well in Christ. Peace of the Lord be with you all. We continue now with the Holy Communion and the Great Thanksgiving. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise you, Almighty, merciful God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so of all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray the prayer you have taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
dwell in Christ, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.